Women in history never heard of and wouldn't be surprised if you haven't either. Today, let's talk about Hani Skoft. Hani Skoft was born in 1920 and passed in 1945. Family and friends called her Jo, but she's often remembered as the girl with the red hair. This one might be rough, so here's your chance to swipe up. I won't be offended. If you're still here, in 1938, Jo was a student at the University of Amsterdam. She held herself to incredibly high moral standards, but she still majored in law. She also became close friends with two Jewish women, Philine and Sonia. They did everything together. Then in 1939, Schittler's cronies invaded Poland. And instead of an attorney, Joe became one of the most well-known Dutch resistance fighters in World War II. At first, she worked with the Red Cross, sending packages for captured Polish soldiers. In May of 1940, the Netherlands fell to the Knot Seas. And a few months later, the persecution of Dutch Jews began. And Joe committed her first illegal resistance. She stole two ID cards from a swimming pool changing room and had them forged. She used them to hide Feline and Sonia. She stole dozens more ID cards and documents. She wanted to save as many as she could. She was also among the 85% of university students who refused to sign a loyalty to asshats declaration. Okay, they were supposed to be declaring loyalty to the fuckheads. Sorry, I got it wrong. I have literally no respect for them. Instead, she left school and dedicated herself to the resistance. Her first assignment? Connect with Freddy and Trush Overstegen. They made a great team. I mean, in the larger scheme of things, it was pretty easy. They'd flirt. A knot C would think with his little head, then catch a bullet with his big one. Moving on. Well, she was so good at what she did, she was at the top of their most wanted list. But they didn't know her name. So they called her the girl with the red hair. Because she had fiery red hair. They were so fucking creative, weren't they? She renamed herself Hani, and that was the alias she'd use for the rest of her days with the Resistance. Her undoing began when she and another Resistance fighter called Jan were assigned to take out an officer. She would shoot first. If she failed, Jan would finish it. And Jan did finish it, but not before the officer shot him in the stomach. Jan was captured and interrogated. I've done videos like this before. Do I have to say it wasn't interrogating? He ultimately gave her up before he passed. She dyed her hair black, started wearing thick glasses. She was unrecognizable, but then she fucked up. At a not C checkpoint, officers found illegal documents like newspapers, well, and a 9mm, in her bag. But they didn't know who they'd caught. On the way to Amsterdam, they figured it out. At the prison, she endured interrogation for several days. She admitted everything she did but they didn't get anything else. On April 17th, 1945, two not-C officers escorted her to the beach at Overveen. As they followed her to the dunes, one of them shot her in the back of the head, but he only wounded her, so the other one opened up with his machine gun. She was buried in a mass unmarked grave among the dunes. The Netherlands was liberated only 18 days later. When liberators uncovered the grave, she was the only woman among hundreds of men. Her remains were reinterred at the Honorary Cemetery in the Netherlands. Now she's honored every November at the memorial statue her friend Trush Overstegen had commissioned. She's remembered for bravery in the face of cruelty, for her humanity when so many others had just fucking ignored theirs. A lot of people lately like to say that that couldn't or wouldn't happen again. But if you're actually paying attention, 